Hello, welcome to David Wong's Iron Body Qigong Meditation. So we're going to go through a sequence that you can do at home or anywhere that will help you develop resilience and bone mass particularly. More bone mass, density, and more resilience. Uh, it's funny because uh, sometimes when you get in a car accident, some people come out unscathed. Uh, they have like no problems, no injuries, whereas some people get additional injuries when they get in a car accident. So when your body has the right kind of mechanics and alignment and all your body is kind of like programmed and your skeleton structure is programmed in a way to absorb shock or to deliver power or energy and force more efficiently what happens is uh, you get uh, you get that strength and resilience so I'll go through a sequence it's a uh, combines breathing some movements and visualization to develop this quality or this attribute inside yourself especially if you're doing any martial arts or combative sports or even uh, like competitive sports, contact sports, such as football or rugby. If you have that resilience, if you have that grounding, uh, it makes you harder to, uh, you'll ta tackle harder. And when somebody hits you, it feels like they're hitting a wall. It feels like they're hitting a truck. Uh, so it's about getting leverage uh, with your body mechanics, but at the same time, learning how to deliver force either from the ground or when you absorb force how to redirect it to the ground instead of into your body does it make sense so when you get hit by an impact it could be a punch kick or a tackle then you have the proper body alignment and relaxation to absorb it but not absorb it into your body which you don't want you want to use your body and your skeletal structure as a frame which redirects that force to the ground so it's kind of like goes through you uh, and the sensation that the attacker or your opponent will feel is they feel like they're pushing against the ground so it's hard to demonstrate without feeling it but um, if you're an athlete you will feel it you, you'll notice the difference once you have trained this for quite some time okay so you start with rubbing your hands together just to get your hands to relax and get that blood flowing at the back of your hands okay now brush your hands like you are wiping something off of your hands like dust or lint both sides on the back in the front and then you shake your hands like you're flinging water off your hands all right and stand completely straight with your feet together imagine there's a bag your head is in the bag and somebody's pulling up the bag like this so the bag, it goes around your jaw and the back of your head and it's pulling up on your head like this and it's just hanging. So imagine there's that force pulling your, you up while everything just drops a little, about an inch and everything just dangles from there. Okay, and everything's relaxed. Shoulders relaxed. Chest relaxed. And you look at the back. Back is nice and fairly straight, especially the lower back. You don't want your lower back to cave in like this. So make sure it's straight. So you want to tuck in your hips, tuck in your tailbone underneath to get that, you know, fairly straight lower back. That's what you want. Okay. Now cover your belly button in this position and just breathe in slowly through your nose. And as you breathe in, you want to feel your tummy expanding. 
You breathe out, your tummy collapses. So feel your tummy going up and down as you breathe in and out through your nose. You can close your eyes or keep your eyes open, doesn't matter. But the important part is to feel your belly button and feel it moving up and down. No, I'm not AI, I'm a real person. It would be cool if I can get AI to do what I'm doing right now. Eventually, right? So take a deep breath, relax. And then relax when you breathe out. Take a deep breath. Feel yourself tensing up, start over. Stand up tall, hang from the head, drop a little, everything dangles from there, and then start again. Okay, so that's called belly breathing. It's good for just general relaxation, and it helps you center yourself. Sound is gone. Sound should be fine. Just turn up your phone volume. Uh, and so your belly button is called Dan Tian. It's uh, they call it the Qi Energy Center. So in Chinese traditional Chinese uh, teachings, they say that this is your battery or your chi battery, chi energy life force battery. You think about it, that's where your umbilical cord is attached to when you're in your mom's womb, right? So literally that's where you receive life force from your mom where you're, when you were uh, in the womb. So it has a special significance. So when you're practicing that, you are kind of reactivating that original place where you uh, basically came from, right? Or the source of your life force. So when you're breathing, you want to make the breath fairly long. I would count at least five seconds. So breathe in, breathe out. Two, three, four, five. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five. And then breathe out. Two, three, four, five. Eventually, if you can do it comfortably, extend that duration to seven seconds, 10 seconds. So you're gonna learn how to breathe really slowly. And what that's gonna do is help you relax, get into deeper states of meditation, help lower your heart rates. Make you more calm. Just imagine you're breathing through this tiny straw so you can only take in a little bit of air that will help you to extend the, the duration of the breath. So if you feel your stomach growling, that's a good thing. That means you activated something. Now I want to teach you another way of breathing. It's similar to what we just did, but what you do is now you want to expand the back, if you can, the back of your belly, uh, you know, if you go from your belly button all the way back, this is called Ming Mun, or some, some it's another point in acupressure. 
it's right behind. So if you go from the belly button all the way back on your spine, right behind there. So just imagine you are expanding that. Okay. So when you're breathing. See how it comes out. So I'm going to make this come out when I breathe. And then when you breathe out, it goes back to the middle. Okay, can you see that? So watch my back. My arms are in the way, but. See how my back expands and kind of. So I'm breathing with my lower back. My lower back is expanding in all directions. When I breathe in. And it's okay to kind of curve yourself a little bit to help that as you're breathing and expanding the back. It's okay to sink back a little to help expand that back because as you sink back, it opens up the back. It opens up your spine. When you do that, it opens up the back. Another thing you can do is actually Put your hands together like this. So as you breathe, you go and bring it back up to here. So breathe in and then your arms and your hands go like this. And what this does is it rounds out your back. See now your, my back simply round when you put your hands like this down to your knees. That helps you to expand this whole lower back. So. And then when you breathe in, I mean breathe out, then you bring it back up to here, back to starting position. There's also, uh, you can say chew, use the word chew when you breathe out. And chew, I think that's the kidney sound. So I go, chew. By the way, make sure you tap the like button. I don't see enough likes here. Tap the screen. Keep tapping it. If you're not doing this exercise, at least you can exercise your finger and tap the screen. Right? So, breathe in. Watch the back. My back has expanded. And then back to position. Okay, so I'll show you the belly breathing. That's called the back breathing. And um, so the next one I'm gonna do called the Grand Tai Chi breathing. So we're going to go like this with our arms. So my arms are going around like this, it's just like a torus. It's like a chi coil, okay? So my arms go like this, my hands are up like this, palms are facing up, and then palms facing down as they come down. And then I flip my hands over, my palms are facing up. Just imagine you're gathering all this energy from above in the sky, and it's coming down through your crown, and then it's washing through your body, your spine, and through your legs and to the ground. Imagine it's going into the ground. So imagine there's this big, you're in the middle of the donut, and then there's energy going around like this, and you're right in the middle. Okay, so use your whatever 
a visualization, imagination that will help you to uh, imagine that energy flowing through. So I'll stand back a little bit more so you can see. Now when your hands are going up, you're breathing out, I'm breathing in, and then when it comes down, you're breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. The more relaxed and slowly you can do this, then the more you'll feel the chi energy. Who can feel the chi energy right now? At least in their hands. Okay, now gather to your third eye. So you use your middle fingers to guide the energy where you want it to go. Now you guide it to your belly button again. Okay, now we're gonna gather from the feet. So imagine you are bending over and then you're lifting these buckets and you're guiding the energy through the middle of your feet up to your back, which is where your kidneys are, and then relax. You bend over, imagine you're lifting, you're pulling up the energy through your feet, through your legs. As you breathe in, and then your hands go like that, back to your kidney, and then relax. Okay, I'll show you the full movement. Like that. Thank you. 
Yeah, bringing water to your kidneys. So when you're going and reaching down, imagine you're pulling water from the ground. You can imagine it coming from, let's say, a well that's really deep, some underground water. And you imagine it pulling it through your feet, up the legs, into your kidneys. And then relax and just let go. So this is a exercise that's very revitalizing. If you feel that uh, you kind of have a, you feel lethargic, this is something good that you can do. A deep, pure well, yeah. So just imagine like the clearest, purest, most refreshing water you can think of and it's deep in the ground and you're pulling that up to your kidneys. Okay, so those are a few of the breathing exercises. Now is hold, hold your hands like this and get back into that hanging posture. And just feel your belly, feel your belly uh, up and going up and down again. So as you're doing uh, these exercises, there shouldn't, if you start to feel tension, you have to stop and wiggle that part of your body. So if you feel tension anywhere, chest, back, if you start feeling tension, just wiggle it, move it, and then start over again and relax. You don't want to do this with um, tension that is cons persistent. So if you have an injury, let's say you injured a place, what you want to do is you want to breathe in energy through that area. Let's say your shoulder hurts. So imagine you're breathing in energy to that area. You can put your hand there if you want, or you just imagine it. Just imagine you're breathing this uh, white light or bright energy that's very healing and very refreshing and then hold it there for a second and then whew, breathe it out. Hold it there for a second, then whew, forcefully breathe out, uh, blow out the pain or the dark energy that you have stuck there. So you're breathing in good energy, hold it there, let it massage, let the energy massage, or you can physically massage that part of your body, let it relax, then forcefully blow it out, okay? Like that. So that's one thing you can do for uh, any kind of um, places that you need additional healing for. It loosened me up nice. That's good. So let's do a few more of these centering breaths, I call them. Okay. And now what I like to do is uh, do some brushing. So just do this with your fingers. Brush. You're brushing your hair, massaging your scalp and brushing. Always starting from the center and going back. Okay, you brush downwards. This is good too, you brush your ears like this. You brush your eyebrows. Brush your cheeks, your sinuses. Going down this meridians of your face like this. That's in your, your chin and your jaw. Brushing it back to your ear here. 
like you're putting on shaving lotion. <laughs> now I'm doing it a little bit too hard. It should be a little softer like this. Okay, brush it. When you go to your ear, you want it to go around your ear, around the back of your ear, and then down your throat here. It's meridian here. Down your throat, then down your shoulders. Imagine you're just moving any kind of stuck energy. So, it, and it's, imagine it's slimy, right? So you can't just brush it off. So you kind of, kind of like push and squeeze it, kind of like squeeze it down. So you, the slime, slime kind of moves a little bit at a time. So you got this goo, right? If you have goo, you can't just brush it one long brush, right? You brush it a little bit, move the goo, then move the goo a little bit more. I don't know if that's a good explanation. Okay, so see what I'm doing? I'm going down the arms here, top of the arm here. You can consider this the top. And then brush it out of the fingers. And then here, brush the top of the arm. Brush it out the fingers. Now you brush it on the inside of the arm. This is the inside, the bottom, underneath the arms. Same thing. Now brush it uh, along the thumb line, so going down this way, out the thumb. What we're doing? This is a this is a meditation, qigong meditation. I know it looks weird, but this is actually been around for thousands of years, and people. It's kind of a lost. Last thing, not people. People do this brushing technique. Uh, when people think qigong, they're just breathing, but and they do some slapping, but not many people do this brushing. I find, but it's it's uh, particularly useful for uh, iron body, which is what we're doing now. Okay, uh, we're doing the thumb. So imagine you're brushing down the thumb, brushing it out the thumb, and then brush it out the pinky. So you gotta flip it over. Brush it out the pinky. So you know you have meridians and organs attached to each finger, right? So that takes care of your entire body. One other thing I like to do is you actually like squeeze the fingers and then and then uh, imagine you're squeezing and then you're like plucking out the energy, any stuck energy from the fingers with the other hand. So you see what I'm doing? I'm plucking it out. Pluck it out. Pluck it out. And use some force. Pluck it out. Pluck it out the middle finger. Pluck it out. Pluck it out. The thumb. Okay. And just once again, fling your head fingers like this, as if you are flinging the water and drying your hands like this. Okay. So. Uh, You can, if you can reach behind, what I do, what I try to do behind, I actually push back behind, push my arm back so I can reach further. And I can reach further and brush my trap muscles here. Okay, now you brush the side of your body here. You have lots of pressure points on the side of your body here. Especially under your underneath your armpit. Another one. Then brush the chest down one side. So imagine there's a line going here, down here. And brushing down. Basically cleaning off any kind of slime on your body. Clean off that slime. This is a good one. If you have uh, gut issues too, you have your solar plexus here. A lot of people have tension there. So all I do is I use my thumb and I kind of 
brush with my thumb so I can go deeper into that meridian. Okay, we can start with going down the chest, the middle. Use both hands like this. You can use your thumb to get deeper. And then it helps to breathe out as you do it as well. And then you can use your thumb to brush too, like this. Or if you have those uh, bamboo sticks, you can use bamboo sticks to do that. But I just use my thumb. Now you're going past your belly, past your belt line, kind of go down to your, um, I don't know what this is called, your hip, side of your hips, and your lower back, and the top of your hips in the back, tailbone, your buttocks, and then brush down your legs, your thighs in the front, Side, thighs in the front, uh, side, inside the thighs. Just all around. And then brush your calves and your, your shin. All different sides of it. Especially behind the knees. There's lots of, lots of nerves there. And then down your ankles and then brush down every toe. So that you can brush so if this is your foot, if this is your foot, you brush the pinky, you brush down every finger, just like we did it for the hand, but I do it for your fit, but I can't show you my foot because I can't lift it that high. <laughs> Let's see how high I can lift it. Okay, so in my foot, I brush the pinky and then I brush the fourth, middle, the thumb like this. So I brush along the foot. Okay, so I brush along the foot like this. But it's usually better when it, it's on the ground, you don't have to lift your foot up like that to do that. Okay, now stomp. <clears throat> so just imagine you are uh, um, just <clears throat> loosening up everything and uh, like uh, forcing it into the ground. <clears throat> imagine you're a sumo wrestler. They do this before they swap, they fight, right? You know sumo wrestlers? <clears throat> Why do they do that? <clears throat> it's to get them more grounded, probably. <clears throat> Help them actually loosen up any stuck energy in their body too. But you don't have to go side to side like this. <clears throat> you go up and down is better actually. I like doing up and down so. Okay, don't do it if there's people living downstairs underneath you. <laughs> it's gonna annoy them. But do it outside. Like you can do it outside or do it uh, if you don't have anyone nearby. Like it's not gonna uh, wake, uh, wake up in the morning <laughs> if you do that. Cause it's gonna be pretty loud when you stop like this. And really feel everything loosen up. You can see my shoulders are loose, elbows are loose, my hands are loose, my spine is loose too, it's springy. Right? My legs are loose, my boot. It's important to keep everything still um, straight and aligned. It's the same principle. Head is uh, uh, suspended and your, your spine is straight. I do that. Okay. Now we did the brushing. Next step is do the padding. So it's exactly the same thing, but you slightly pat instead of brush. And the pats have a direction. Okay, so you go in the same direction. It's not just patting in. The pats have direction. Like you are you're activating that direction of where the energy is supposed to go.
Okay, same thing. Going down the shoulders. Going down the chest. Notice that the better structure or better alignment you have, the, the more your hand hurts when you hit yourself. Because you're developing the iron body. And the more, th the deeper the thud when you hit yourself. So you're becoming uh, more resilient. Once again, you feel tension, breathe into there, and relax it, move it, relax it, and gain back that, that, um, the suspended feel. But at the same time, you want to feel like your body and your muscles and your tissue, so the meat is hanging and melting off of your skeleton. Okay, so do the same, same thing we did with the brushing, but now we are doing the padding. But it's directional, it goes down. The padding with a direction. Is there, if there's a particular place you need more resilience, for example, you do martial arts, you definitely need strong forearms, so you do a little bit more on the forearms and the hands. Do your, you can do some more, especially if you do any kind of combative martial arts, people are going to hit you in the body. So you develop more resilience, your upper body and your middle body. And find the best position or stance that helps you feel like your hands hurt more because if your hands hurt more, that means your body is actually bouncing back the, uh, the impact. Obviously, if your body hurts less, even though you're hitting yourself pretty hard, that also means that you have more resilience. And if you're more advanced, you can actually put your hands out and then actually hit yourself pretty hard. Move to the legs. So, and then the feet. So as you're doing this, you're actually developing uh, more striking power in your hands and more iron in your hands. So there's an iron fist, iron palm and iron body, right? So you're developing all at the same time. So, um, I don't know if I can do it, but uh, I have some boards I can break just like that, about two inches away. You know how people break boards, they go, Wah! right? I can pick them with just that short distance, like that. Uh, so you develop that kind of um, uh, iron sensation in your, in your strikes. Okay, so that's, and you do some more stomping. All right, now for the Qigong part, what I want to work on is I want to work on the sensation. So work on the stance that's going to uh, allow you to be more resilient, right? So the one that's very common is uh, 
you know, I'm in a fighting stance. Uh, and so you're have one leg forward, one leg back, and you want to have the same principle. So you are suspended here. The rest melts and drops from there. Your back is slightly curved, but not that curved, like slightly curved like this. You can lean forward a little bit, but not too much like that. You can lean forward a little. And then you have your hands here because you're in a defensive position. Okay, you don't have to have them touching, but you have your hands around here so you can block, you know, strikes that come here and you can block strikes that are directed against your body. If something's coming in the middle, you just turn a little bit to block that. Okay, but what you want to do is uh, you want to develop that resilience from this position, right? So what you want, so what you practice is not only the position, but also the intention and the uh, basically meditation while you're doing that. Okay? So I'm combining meditation with fighting, which is what martial arts is, right? So you have this fighting position, but you're using meditation to give yourself the attributes that we just worked on, which is iron body, okay? So breathe in, breathe out. And then with every breath, I want you to feel as if your muscles are melting off, melting off and sinking and like washing uh, over your skeleton, okay? So imagine it's all melting. I know it's harder to do with your hands up, but they, so you can start with your hands down and just imagine it's melting all the way to the gown, to your feet. All these muscles are melting, melting, but your skeleton is still in that position. Your legs are melting, but they're still in that position. So you're relaxing all the muscle and tissue to hang off of that skeletal structure. Okay. Now if you get too tense, stand back up. Maybe do it with without such a low stance. You can do it standing up a little bit taller, and then relax. See how my body kind of sinks and kind of sits into place. So remember the exercise we did. Now do it, let's do, actually, let's do it like this. And then imagine sequentially relaxing every part of your body from your head to the toe. Okay, now do it without using the hands, with your hands down. Just have the same sensation going through your body, just by using your mind, just relaxing each part of your body as you breathe out. As it goes down to the feet. And then more advanced is you actually lift your hands up. And one way to do this is to practice this first. Your hands are up, but they're also relaxed. They're relaxed, this is relaxed, all relaxed. Relaxed, relaxed. And then imagine it all melting off, muscles melting. And then when you do this, then you can stay relaxed because of the ten the moment some, when somebody does this, then their shoulders come up and they become tense, right? So the point is you want to practice this enough so that your arms are completely loose and relaxed, but still weighty. You can see they're kind of bouncy and they have weight and you have, you can see everything relaxed and I'm imagining all the meat is relaxed and hanging off melting off that bones. You do this for some time, then you can move to this and then have the same effect. Okay, because this is this is a better defensive position than this, right? This is, not, this is just for practice, but for application, you want to, if you're defensive, you're doing this, right? Okay, maybe slightly outwards, but just for simplicity's, simplicity's sake. Just like this. Okay, so practice that relaxation. And the key is to relax the shoulders. Even though you're in this kind of, we can say like a more tense position. 
So I try to relax it as much as possible. You can see I'm in a pretty low stance. Your legs might get tired. So just move it. Move your legs, shake them a little bit. Stand up a little bit and then sink back into that position. As you feel there's a point where you sink down where it feels like, okay, you can like sit there and without much uh, additional effort. Now, see if you can do the back breathing because the thing about this position, it's hard to breathe your belly, especially if you have hits coming in. You're gonna, you're gonna stop breathing because if you breathe through your belly um, and your belly's being hit, <laughs> it'll stop your breathing. So what you wanna do is breathe with your back like I showed you earlier. So, so see what's happening, I'm breathing, expanding my back. So it's reverse of belly breathing. Breathing, belly breathing is right. Back breathing is okay. And the good thing about back breathing is because people, the person in front of you, they're not gonna hit your back. So you can even breathe in while you hit, getting hit. See, it doesn't interrupt your breathing. Try it. Try to do belly breathing, like belly expanding while hitting yourself. It's harder, right? It feels like you're resisting the punch with your breath, but try breathing with your back and hitting yourself. Actually, what, you, what what's happening is you actually tense up the gut and actually become more resilient, but it doesn't restrict your breathing because you are using your back to breathe, okay? Nobody talks about it because um, they don't know. So that's a special trick. If you want to be able to breathe while you're in the defensive and taking hits at the same time, breathe with your back, not with your belly. And definitely not with your chest, okay? So there's there's, a, there's levels of progression. Most people like breathing with their chest, which makes you tense up naturally. Just, just activates your, uh, your flight and flight system. So if you breathe through your chest, but they don't do anything, you don't even have to be in a, in a fight. Naturally, you get more stressed out. If you breathe through your belly, then naturally, if, you, if you're not even sleeping or trying to relax, you're going to relax. Now, if you breathe through your back, you get the same, you get to activate your energy because your kidneys are in the back. And you can breathe while somebody hitting you in the stomach or in the gut. And it tenses up your gut so that it can take more hits. So. Pretty cool, right? So try doing this. I know I'm kind of going in advance, but it's a progression of what we did earlier. Back breathing. The belly breathing. The stance. You might have to practice that for a few weeks before you can do this, but this is where you want to go. Okay, you want to go where you can do this. Relax your body and breathe with your back. Sideways, you can see my back is expanding when I'm breathing in. So I'm actually sinking back a little bit, you can see. Okay, so try that. Um, now, the only thing to do is to try the other stance. So you have your right leg forward. I had my left leg forward. That's where most people fight. Some people fight south paw, so they have the right leg forward. So do the same thing. Right leg forward. Actually, I need more practice with this because I don't usually fight right forward. Now you need to also find a balance, right? Because if you start doing this and then 
getting too low, too low, too low, then you're actually in a bad position. So you want to lean forward like this. This is the maximum I would lean forward. This will be a little too much. So you can hunch over because it helps you protect yourself. And if you do this, if you're weaving or if you're ducking from something, that's okay. But if you start going like this and holding that, then you're in a really bad position, okay? So. Now here's another trick. So while you have that happening, you want to imagine your feet are screwing into the ground, outwards like this. Both of them are screwing into the ground outwards. So imagine this is your foot and you're screwing into the ground, but you're resisting it by pressing harder into the ground. So it stops it from screwing into the ground. Okay, here's, here's the ground, here's your foot, right? So you got your foot, you want to screw it into the ground like this, but you're stopping it because the force or the grip or the pressure you're putting into the foot is stopping it from screwing into the ground. So for the left foot, it's going the other way, right? Your left foot wants to do this, but then because you're putting pressure into the ground, it stops it. So you have this spiraling tension. It's like a spring you're building up in your, in your legs both ways. So you have two spiraling tensions this way, okay? So you want to imagine that you can start with one foot. Just imagine you screwing it into the ground, but your feet, because of the pressure you're putting on the feet, are preventing it from actually moving the foot. Just like you're going this, it kind of stops there. You see, I want to go this way, but it's being stopped by the pressure. So that's what you want to happen with your feet. And if you can do it with the other feet, same thing. And you can do both feet, then that's what you want. Okay. Now, so you can do that, combining all the other things I just talked about, okay? Uh, head suspended, body melting, spine aligned and straight, everything melted, knees bent, arms up, back breathing, with, we call it the screwdrivers, drilling both feet into the ground. Now, if you can, you can do this, you practice this every day, Get somebody to get somebody to just slap you on the shoulder or get somebody to slap you on the leg. Ask them what they feel. And it's gonna feel really solid for them. If you, they, if you do this really well, they will feel like they're hitting a tree. Like imagine hitting a big tree with a hard you can, your hand's gonna hurt a lot. Even if you smack lightly on a on a solid tree, it's going to bounce back and your hand's gonna hurt. So that's that's the idea, that's what you want. You want to make yourself into a tree. Okay, so you need a strong butt muscles for this, hip muscles, abductor muscles, um, but it's uh, pretty useful. Try this side.
So if you're getting hot and getting sweaty just breathing and standing there, that's good. So it's actually more harder work than you think just standing and breathing, right? Never thought Qigong should be such hard work. Okay, so next is iron fist. So it's a natural progression, right? If you have iron body, you can develop iron fist or iron palm, or even iron fingers. You see people breaking bricks with just their fingers. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been able to train up to that yet, but I'm working on my iron fist, which is, you know, not bad right now. Um, but I'm gonna take it to a much higher level. And how I'm gonna do it is, um, is to use all those principles and but well while you're doing that you want to imagine that you have chains let's say you have chains draped over your entire body so you have chains heavy iron chains that are draped on your shoulders they're draped over here they're draped over they're hanging from your arm they're hanging from every part of your body hanging from your hips everywhere so just use your imagination to imagine that as you're punching, you actually have to move all those chains with your punch. Okay, let's just let's just do uh, let's just do the end position. So let's say this is a punch, right? Okay, whatever punch you want to do. Notice that my body is also in the same defensive position, and then my punch is just in that position, and then just rotate out. It's the same position but just add a little rotation as it comes out. Okay, now let's not work on this. This is another lesson on how to do this, but let's just imagine you just punching out there. And then um, while you punch, you want to hold that position and then do the breathing. Back breathing. While you have that punch extended. Now, you, well, now while you're doing this, add another, add another visualization, which is adding the chain. So imagine your chain's draped on your arm. So it feels very heavy. But the key is to stay relaxed, see him still relaxed in this position. I know your shoulder is gonna hurt if you haven't done this before. And your shoulder is going to get tired because you're keeping your arms lifted up. But the point is to keep being able to do this and keep that position while you have everything else happening that we just taught you, right? All the relaxation. Now add the chains. So there's chains and then now also, next thing you want to do is breathe in. You might imagine that there's this flow of energy coming down these two knuckles, down your shoulder, through your bone, through the forearm here, down these two knuckles. So breathe in. Imagine it's coming from here and it's coming up your spine, through your back, down your shoulders in this way. So breathe in and as you breathe out, just imagine you're creating that energy channel through there. Now you can use these two fingers to guide it. So you go, breathe in, breathe out. And then point where you want it to go. Actually do this, this is easier. So breathe out. And just imagine that those two fingers are pointing where you want to send the energy. Let's say you're sending the energy out.
Okay, if I'm, I'm tired, do the other arm. Now you can do the two fingers, turn this into a knuckle because you're not gonna do this unless you're really good and you can you can hurt somebody with two fingers. Uh, so turn into this, but still have that line of force or that intention of the energy coming out of those two knuckles. Now, if, you, uh, if you're more advanced, then you can actually have the movement. So you're breathing in. And then use your other hand to guide it for now. So as you're breathing in, breathe it through your Tan Tian, and then guide it out through the hand, out through your knuckles, and then extend it actually into the distance. Later on, you don't need this other hand, so you can use it to block or whatever you want. And just use your visualization or your mind to direct the energy. Okay, so I showed you lots of different progress progressive steps to take to train this. See, so the more it looks like, it's starting to look like Tai Chi, right? Well, that's where Tai Chi came from, right? You're, you're, the, the idea is to learn how to use your movements, but coordinate the body to guide the energy flow through, through the movements. So I'm kind of going, doing Tai Chi backwards. <laughs> Does that make sense? Right? A lot of people do Tai Chi to do the movements. And then later on, when you do a lot of Tai Chi, then they gain internal internal power so i'm going backwards i'm doing the internal power first which is the breathing and the internalization and the uh and the structure and the meditation and visualization that's internal that's you can't see it right then i'm building it into the movement so i'm doing tai chi backwards so a lot of people ask like what's the difference between tai chi and qigong with qigong you're building these you're building the internal power Tai Chi is supposed to build that, but there's a bunch of movements. Tai Chi is just a bunch of movements, right? You have 12 movement form, 24, 48, whatever. It's just a bunch of moves. But the important part uh, that you're supposed to develop through Tai Chi is internal power. That's, that's more important than Tai Chi. Because once you have the internal power, you can, you can apply it to any movement, right? You can apply it to that movement that I'm working on. Very basic one, two, right? In boxing, right? Or even MMA, whatever. This is a very natural way to, natural attack. And basically any martial art, they have this, they have a one, two punch, right? Very basic. So, uh, or you can use it for baseball, right? You can build it into your baseball movement, you can basically build it into a tennis racket, you can build it into your golf swing. So 
once you have internal power, you can apply it to any movement or even not movement. You can apply it to something stationary like a stance, like a defensive stance or, or even weightlifting where you're not actually moving. Uh, you're, you know, you're not actually, well, you are moving, but you're not like moving on the ground. You stay, you're staying put, right? Uh, so you can develop that into any kind of movement or any kind of stance. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to work on that and you can follow through. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask. So I'm pretty good at this. Now I need to work on my southpaw techniques, which is uh, my right foot forward. So I'm just going to work on that. So while I'm training this, what I'm doing is I'm checking my stance, I'm always checking my spine, I'm checking for relaxation as I'm doing the movement. And I feel myself tensing up, I move it around and then, and then I change it, relax it again. I feel the groundedness when I reach the end of position. I check the energy flow through the right direction, the right channel. I practice the breathing. So there's a lot of things, but if you do thing one at a time, if you do one at a time, then you can eventually put it all together. So let's say I'm working on one thing. Let's work on, let's say the, uh, the back breathing. So I'm just gonna focus on that part. So I'm combining the back breathing with this movement. Okay, now let's uh, work on, let's say, uh, work on the muscles melting off my my skeleton. So I focus on that. Focus on the melting and relaxation. Right now I'm focusing on the melting and the relaxation. Make sure my whole body is melting, not just my arms. So if my torso gets tight, my legs get tight, I just move it and pra practice melting those two. So I lost it for a second, so I need to relax a little bit more. So notice that when you start to speed up, then you start to tense up. So the point is to keep it slow so that you can keep the relaxation even throughout the whole movement.
relax, sinking, melting. And if you can say those words to yourself, it actually helps you. So you think the word melting, 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 relax, relax, melting, sinking, relax, melting, pouring. So you keep saying those words in your, you say it out loud or you say it while you're doing it. It actually helps your body to do what it needs to do. Okay, so now let's say I'm working on um, the chains. So just imagine there's chains all around your body, draping, heavy, thick iron chains hanging off your whole body, and you're doing this while all this weight is on your whole body. Now you're doing this probably what automatically happens is your body kind of like <clears throat> hunkers down because it has to support all this extra weight. If you're visualizing this uh, properly. <sighs> heavy chains, heavy chains, very heavy draping on my body. Heavy chains. Heavy, 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 heavy. Heavy chains. Heavy, heavy chains. And you see me starting to sweat because it's actually, you are, you are, I don't know, psychologically, training your muscles to lift weights. You're lifting weights without lifting weights. You guys, uh, have you guys heard of some weightlifters that actually uh, don't lift, practice lifting weight, they just practice lifting imaginary weights and they actually get stronger? That's the idea, okay, same idea. I'm just using my brain to train my muscles without actually using weights by imagining that there's weights on them. And surprisingly, your muscles grow and become stronger just doing that. You don't actually need real weights. Okay, I lost it. So, uh, heavy, heavy, heavy chains, heavy chains, whole body, heavy chains, Heavy chains. It's good to stop there and then just check everything, right? So check, head suspended, spine is aligned, muscles are loose, hanging from your skeleton, breathing through your back, breathing is not restricted, feet are gripping the ground, and now add the chains. Now heavy chains up through the whole body. That's good. Slowly transition to the next position while keeping all of that. So keep everything. So in this position now, now I'm going to check again. Suspended, spine straight, muscles relaxed, breathing not restricted and then add the chains. So chains, very heavy, heavy chains, heavy chains. And then slowly transition to the next one while keeping the heavy chains on your arms. You guys know the Green Lantern? Basically, that we're doing that. You're imagining and using your Imagination to create things out of nothing. Heavy chains. A 
Okay, and let's work on the next thing. So next thing is I'm going to work on the part where I am projecting the energy away from me. So imagine that this punch, I guess I'm a superhuman, I'm a superhuman and I can punch something far away. Like I can punch someone without even touching them. Like the force, I can use the force and I can send this punch energy and make somebody go ah! like that. So now I'm not going to teach you how actually, actually how to do that, but I'm going to teach you how to imagine that you can do that. <laughs> and uh, so what you do is uh, same thing. Now imagine you have this energy here, breathe in and it, it uh, kind of accumulates here. And then as you breathe out, you're making it come up the spine, up the spine here to your back, out to your shoulder, so all the time breathing still goes through your back. Yeah, I recommend it. I recommend that because I'm assuming that you are in a fight. So I'm training for fighting. I'm actually competing in uh, end of August, amateur boxing. So I'm assuming that you're in the fight. That's why I'm, I, I uh, want to focus on back breathing because when you do back breathing, you don't you don't stop breathing when you get hit on the in the body or when you get hit in general. Now, it's not as relaxing as belly breathing. So what you do, what I do is I do belly breathing in between rounds to get my heart rate down, so that I can gather my energy, recenter myself, and calm myself down and relax myself. So belly breathing is for that. Now, so so if you're you're strategically relaxing do belly breathing but if you strategically want more resilience then do back breathing okay so so when i'm training this i'm doing back breathing because right now i'm fighting right why would i do this in between between rounds i'm just wasting energy right in between rounds i'm just doing this i'm doing kidney breathing to get myself more energy and i'm doing belly breathing to calm myself down, to get my heart rate back down so I can fight the next round. Uh, but yeah, I'd be doing this back breathing most of the time. Uh, freezing. I don't know why. Internet connection should be fine. Uh, what was I? Okay, yeah. So the next one is projection. So I'm imagining I'm projecting. So first, we're going to use these fingers. Okay. It's not really... I'll, I'll try to do it without the camera. Uh, while I'm doing this camera, because I'm looking at the camera, actually, it's, it, it inhibits my practice because I'm just looking at the camera, I'm not projecting. But I'm going to look past the camera. Okay, so same thing. To breathe in. And as I breathe out. Just, just do one for now, one hand. So just find the most efficient way of sending energy from your stomach up your spine to your arm. And then actually, it's probably easier to do this. So just hold it out there and point at where you want to send the energy like this. And just imagine the energy going through to find that first channel before you do the movement. So just do the static position and do the breathing. So breathe, breathe in. And then when you breathe out, imagine the energy flowing through a path that ends up and these two fingers. And then as it ends up as your fingers, imagine it's shooting out from it.
So I close your eyes and really feel that energy, that pathway. There should be a little tingling or heat or whatever. Um, and really try to feel, and you gotta relax while you do this. I know it's hard to relax while you have your arm down, but the whole point of this is so you can do that, is to, while you have your arms extended, feel the energy originating from your belly button, going out your back and up your spine, and then going from your spine up at this point, then it goes and transfers to a point in your shoulder, And then eventually it gets to your elbow. And then after your elbow, it spirals, it spirals inwards into your, your arm bone here. And then it comes out these two knuckles. So it connects to your hand, these ligaments, and, to, and then to your fingers. Now, if you can't feel it, one easy way to cheat is I'm just gonna skip everything in between. I'm just gonna connect this with your fingers. Okay, so just skip everything in between and just connect your belly with your fingertips. So I'm just imagining every time breathing in, when I'm breathing out, my belly is sending energy to my fingertips. Okay, let's try the other one. In case this gets tired, so I'm gonna do this fingertips. Connect your belly to your fingertips. Okay, so you guys practice that. You want to go one step further? You guys ready for one step further? I know this is really complicated, uh, complex already. So it'll take you probably a few, a couple months to figure this out. Um, but the next step is now we got this channel of energy going from your belly through your spine, through your arm, through your fingertips, right? So the next one is from your belly through your legs, most likely the back leg and then through your feet into the ground. So when you are breathing in, as you're doing the motion, you want to imagine the energy going that direction too. So what's happening is you actually have energy going two directions at the same time, okay? So as you breathe in, you do the back breathing. As you breathe out, it's going out both ways. See what I'm doing? I'm just showing where the energy is going. Energy is going to my back. Energy is coming out, out through my my heel. Usually the heel. When Tai Chi is supposed to be heel, but if you are, you know, if you're on the balls of your foot, then it will be the ball of the foot. So depending on whatever you have contact with the ground, but in Tai Chi is typically the heel. So energy is going down the heel, and then coming out this way. So when I'm doing breathing, it's going actually both directions. Actually, you can just hold it there and just practice that. Breathe in, going out the, both directions, down the legs and out your finger. Down the legs, out your finger at the same time. Okay, same way for this thing, for this hand.
Okay, so that's a little preview about you know what's next. Um, and there's more and more stuff you can add to it. But for your, if you're just starting out, just keep it simple. Just pick one of those things like I was doing and just work on one thing. It's really hard to do it, like layer five different things together at the same time. But the point is when you can do one thing really well, then it becomes automatic. Then you can add on another thing, do it for a long time, that becomes automatic. And then eventually you can layer many, many different um, intentions and, and um, internal energy, like chi energy into uh, everything that I do, every movement has that. Hey Tracy, I'm so weak in my core, I can only do this exercise for a second or two. No pain and just no strength. So just keep doing it, right? Um, this is different from this is different from what you see conventionally, which is you go, go lift weights, you go to a physiotherapist, oh, use these rubber bands and strengthen your body, which is great. Uh, but then sometimes it's harsh on your joints or sometimes it, it depletes your energy, right? So this kind of training, it actually increases your battery and your capacity uh, more. And not just your, like your heart can pump more blood. I'm talking about like your body can generate more um, healthy healing energy so that it can recover it and rejuvenate better. Uh, your digestion will be better so you can absorb nutrients more. You can see I'm actually 43. If you look at my profile and many people say I look like I'm in my 20s. I'm fighting competitively against like 20 year olds in the gym, half my age. And then obviously I punch way harder than them. Um, and um, I'm much faster than them. So I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not bragging, but I'm just want you to realize that you can do that by kind of making that paradigm shift. Whereas like you can have this resilience and you can have this longevity and anti-aging and even like physical strength and resilience without the traditional way, which is just like hard exercise and lifting weights, or, which is all great. But you can do that with just with at life force and chi energy is I think it's the more uh, how do you say it? it's the more um, age friendly yeah I could be doing this until I'm a hundred years old or even further and I would still be able to do these exercises and still be able to get the benefits whereas if you're a hundred years old you're not going to be at the gym lifting weights actually it's not recommended if you're a hundred years old to lift heavy weights I know people still do it and still so on but but generally it's not the healthiest thing because you are overtaxing your body so um there's softer let's just say there's softer ways of enhancing your strength and uh, resilience and endurance through meditation which is what we're doing here okay you're 53 your bones hurt want to reverse it and of course make sure you're using my chi coils that's a huge factor when it comes to longevity and for reactivating your self-healing it uh because it recharges your cells it's literally like a charger for your cells your cells are like little batteries right so when they are don't have enough voltage you know batteries have voltage then you don't have enough voltage and don't have enough current to make things healthier make the natural processes of healing happen in your body so what naturally you do is you just get sicker and sicker and more and more tired because there's many things draining that battery every day uh, from your environment. So like from EMFs and so on. So what you need is you need something. If you're not doing meditation like what I'm doing or Qigong, then you need something like Qi coils that can recharge your batteries without you doing anything. It does it for you because it's just like plugging it in, plugging a rechargeable battery back into the charger. Plus it does something very special called scalar energy uh, which makes it in the right polarity. So your body has a positive negative, just like a battery has a positive negative. When you flip the battery upside down in the charger, does it charge the battery? Of course not. You need to flip it the right way and put it in the right way for it to charge. So that's what's happening with our bodies too, is we are actually flipped. 
So to flip it back the right direction, we use our yin yang coils, right? Get it? Yin yang coils uh, with our chi coils. And that actually sets you back up to, in the right polarity. So now you can charge yourself back up again. So, so we have all that technology built in into our product and you can experience it for a very low, low cost. It's only like uh, $300 for our most basic smallest one. And if you make payments on that, it'll be like 70 bucks a month or something like that for a few months. Yeah, I just did that scalar. So our cheat coils have scalar energy if you get the, the professional systems. By the way, uh, we do have a community. Make sure you go to um, my profile, which is uh, usethechi.com. Check out the bottom of the page and then there's a community. We have a Facebook community group. We also have a um, Chi Life Academy. We have a lot of free courses on there. We have um, some of these recorded meditations in there. And we also have a 30 day meditation Qigong challenge, which is free that you can get there. So, so go to join those both communities. We're also looking for community leaders too. So if you have um, some kind of skill that you can teach uh, related to what we're doing, we're looking for people to lead workshops and, and uh, webinars and so on. Does anybody have more questions about our technology, chi coils, our frequencies, or any other questions? That's right, Ellen, that's the website. Thanks for posting that. Yeah, if somebody can post it on the comments there. The melting part, you want me to describe the melting part? So it's just a visualization. So what you're doing is you are just standing straight, but and then melting. So uh, melting the muscles or the tissue or the meat off of your body. Okay, just imagine it's melting down and melting off like it's liquid or it's goo, a slime, and it's just melting off of your skeleton while you don't structurally melt, like this is structurally melting. You're structurally strong, like your skeleton is, the frame is still strong but then the meat is melting like goo off of that frame so that's what's the melting um, visualization and what happens when you do that is you become more resilient just by doing that is there a way to lose weight through meditation yes uh, we do have meditation frequencies for weight loss Actually, we don't even call them meditation frequencies. They're just frequencies for weight loss. And check out some of our uh, users. It's quite amazing. They really fit. And I don't think they work out. <laughs> they, they just use our frequencies. And you can see they're, they're really fit now. Um, and what how it works is we just use frequencies to deliver weight loss or uh, thing, uh, supplements that give you more metabolism. So you're resting your resting um, metabolism is naturally boosted. So that means that when you're sleeping, you're burning more energy. When you're just sitting there, you're burning more energy. And uh, so it's like you have this furnace, then you're melting the fat away just naturally. Now, if you add exercise to that, then it's gonna boost the results from the exercise, right? So yeah, we have weight loss frequencies. Uh, you, you can use it without the chi coils. You can just listen to the frequencies or you could combine it with chi coils and you get even a deeper effect with it. So somebody asked, is this Tai Chi? It's not Tai Chi, right? Tai Chi is, has a set movements, right? You have set movements. It's like a uh, choreo choreography, okay? And then there's movements that go with it. Okay, so this is not Tai Chi. I'm just training internal power called Qigong and I'm adding my fighting movements into it. And it's basically called Iron Body Qigong. Where can you find, where can you find these frequencies? You can find them on our website. So if you just go to that link I showed you, use the qi.com, uh, it'll have a list of different places you can go to find all the stuff that we offer. 
Is it music? No, it's not music, it's frequencies. So, and it's not just one frequency. We have 5,000 frequencies inside one of our frequencies. It's hard to explain. It's something you just need to listen to, uh, to because really there's nothing like it. People say it's like alien music. So just imagine alien music. That's what it sounds like. Okay. Now, a lot of people ask, do you use the Qi coils? Is, is it the frequencies or is it the coil? And the answer is both. So the frequencies can be listened to. That has an effect. The coils are silent and they turn the frequencies into magnetic energy. And that has an effect. So if you combine both of them together, you get a powerhouse of like energy healing. So, so, um, so that's what makes it very special compared to everything else out there. There's actually nothing out there that combines audible frequencies that are that will help you that are effective without any device just the audible just hear listening to them and a coil that is silent that creates magnetic energy i hope that makes sense if you go to my website i have you know long uh explanation videos to explain how that all works yeah you want to get the coil uh, right now we have a, um, a special so when you get a coil anything above the chico mini and higher you get a frequency voucher so you can get up to a like 500 dollar voucher that you can use to buy additional frequencies if you want we have many we have thousands and thousands of frequencies you can choose from so let's say you want to use it towards your weight loss frequency you can use the voucher towards that or you can use it towards an autism frequency, which uh, if you've seen, uh, is very helpful. So we have frequencies for everything you can think of. We have for basic ones, for sleep, stress, for meditation, for energy. Uh, we have ones for weight loss, like I said. I wait, we have ones for skin care and anti-aging. We have ones for, uh, what else? Attracting abundance, prosperity. We have ones for you know serious health conditions. Uh, by the way, we can't claim that we can treat, heal, or mitigate or prevent disease, but we do have frequencies that support people who have cancer, diabetes type one and two, heart cardi cardiovascular issues like stroke, um, stress, any kind of like mental health issues like trauma. Uh, we have even the world's most powerful, most effective frequencies for autism. ADHD, learning disability, which nobody thought existed. Uh, we have frequencies for Lyme disease, Lyme disease, parasites, gut health. Uh, we have frequencies for longevity, nootropics for brain health. So go to use the chi. Somebody post that on there so they can see um, what the what the thing is. Oh yeah. So if you're into sports and you're an athlete or you want to, and you want to lose weight or get more fit, uh, get more power, stronger, bigger muscles, then, um, we have frequencies for biohacking. For example, I listened to the BPC 157 frequency, methylene blue, all the top biohacking supplements we have as a frequency. So think about it. If you get those supplements, some of them, first of all, are hard to get, or they might be even illegal. Uh, so, and it's expensive to keep taking. Like for example, ma magic mushrooms, right? A lot of people are talking about how magic mushrooms or psilocybin has all these properties that are really helpful. Um, but they're expensive. You keep keep using it, and then they have side effects too. So. We actually have a, a frequency for that. So you just need to listen to frequency. You can listen as many as times as you want. This is t one time I was at a party and I started playing the frequency and everybody went crazy. I don't mean crazy, but everybody was like really high and really happy. Uh, when I started playing the frequency in the party, so just think about it. It's a, it can be used uh, uh, what do you call it? recreationally. <laughs> you can use frequencies recreationally as well. So you just buy the frequency once and you can use it forever uh, and you can use it for many people at the same time. So you have family members, people living at your house, pets and animals. They also benefit from it. We actually have a whole line of um, frequencies for pets and animals. We actually uh, endorsed 
by America's number one chiropractic university for animals. Okay, the the founder of the university actually says this is the best device he's ever used. So now they're teaching all the veterinarians how to use my chi coils and creating protocols for for all the different animals. So if you have a pet, this is a, a must have. Like just imagine adding five or ten years to your pet's life. That's huge, right? We want to, our companions to live as long as possible so that we can be together and. You know, in, on this world as long as possible. So why aren't you using chi coils? That's what I want to say. Like, why why aren't you? When you can extend the life and the happiness of your companions that you love so much. Hey, uh, Katrina, I listen to frequencies every day. I have healed in so many ways. Fantastic. Excited to get a coils. Yeah, that's great. Me too. I'm excited for you. Um, yeah, lots of exciting things happening. And uh, yeah, so make sure you join the community so you can talk to other people, share your experiences. Also on juicethechi.com, go to the bottom. You can join our Facebook community, which you're kind of like reviving. We kind of had it, uh, we had kind of turned it off for some time. So we we're building more activity there. So make sure you go there, post something, introduce yourself, whatever. And also go to our Chi Life Academy, which you can get a free account. And also our community in there. You can get all the lessons and courses. It definitely works. Thanks for the bright light. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm here for another couple minutes. My problem is I don't know how to get your product and you're not answering me. So you go to usethechi.com, go to the website, and the products are and the links are there. I'm sorry that I did not get your question. If you have a question, because the feed goes up very quickly. There's lots of people commenting, so I might not see it. Sometimes it, I miss it. So if you have a question that isn't answered, just type it again so I can see it. You need to face uh, Nigga May Facebook. Yeah, Alien, you can extend your cat's life, your dog's life, even animals. I don't know how many of you have like larger animals or um, like horses or sheep. Cattle, goats, uh, chickens, ducks. We can help any kind of animal. Have you got one for teens? Well, they work for all ages, even young kids or even babies benefit from them. So there's no one specific for teens, but if you're asking for something for teens problems. Yes, we have chicos and we can help Teen problems, right? And what are some teen problems you want help with? Like better grades, better focus, ADHD, less stress, better relationships, right? We have all those. Okay, we have one for learning activation. We have one set for mental health, for relationships. So, so definitely help teens or sleep, general ones, sleep, everybody needs sleep, no matter what age you are. We have ones for um, just plain teens. So we don't have like a teens frequency, but you can use all of our frequencies for teens and it works very great with teens. What about dragons? Do you ever play your frequencies on your lives? Sometimes, but because our lives are very long, um, playing frequencies gets me over energized. <laughs> so I just play normal music instead. <laughs> yeah, because there's one time I was doing a live for an hour and I was playing the frequency through the whole live. And then, I mean, the people loved it, but what ended up happening, I couldn't sleep because I had so much energy. <laughs> but I knew it wasn't because of something else I did. I knew it was for the frequency. So, um, and that's just for me. Some people need uh, more frequency. Some people need less. It just depends on how sensitive you are to these uh, energies. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for hanging out and training with me. I'm going to be doing more of these. Now, I'm going to be competing in Vancouver, BC. August 31st, 
that's my amateur boxing match. Uh, I'll give you more details later. I don't know how many of you are local, but if you want to watch me fight, then, um, you know, come out and check it out. That's what I'm training for. It's going to be my first fight. And, you know, I've always wanted to compete and then see how my skills are and then get better at what I do, which is martial arts and uh, achieve my full potential. So people say, well, you're 43. Aren't you a little bit too old to be fighting? But uh, I'm going to prove everybody wrong who thinks that that's that there's an age limit to how old you are to compete. You said it could heal any animal. I just brought up. Yeah, so so assuming you actually have a dragon, then if you do, yes, G coils can help dragons, any kind of animal. You just need a if it's a big dragon, you just need a bigger G coil. Then you need our biggest G coil to to help the dragon. Where's the uh, competition? Competition will be in Richmond, Vancouver, Canada. I'm going to see if I can record it, so maybe I can post it after after the, the match. Okay, so if you have more questions, feel free to message me on our website, glifestore.com, or you can just send me a direct message. And uh, looking forward to talking to all you, all of you very soon. Okay, having a good day. Use the chi and prosper.